Bob Hayden joined by Andrew McCarthy. He's back. Uh, wait, wait, he's back. Where, where were you, Andrew? Where'd you go? Uh, I went home to Australia for, well, it was close to three months. I think I left just before Christmas and um, made it back uh, last Thursday night. So. Okay, so when you go home for three months, uh, that's not a vacation. You're not sitting around drinking uh, pina coladas, are you? You're, you're working too. Yeah, I've done a little work this year. I helped my father out a bit. He's got a 20 odd head there. So. Um, I've uh, done a little bit of driving. It, uh, it, it covered the bills anyway. Does your uh, brother Luke need any help down under? He's got a lot of head, but he's got a lot of help as well. He, um, he's doing just fine. He's going well. What did, uh, what did your brother Luke think of his stay here when he was here? He had a great time. He, um, you know, I think he really learned a lot, especially how to drive a big track. Um, when he went back there, they just opened up Menangle, which is a 7 8 track, and... Um, I think the, the lessons he learned here really helped down there. How about the, uh, what is the racing schedule down under? Like, we're not that familiar. How often do they normally race a week? What's the purse structure? You know, they're racing for pretty good purse money now, especially in uh, Sydney and Melbourne. Um, so they, it's year-round racing, but the Grand Circuit meet is uh, pretty much the summertime, and they do have a small winter carnival. Okay. And now you and your brother both drove Muscle Hill, the great sire now, great racehorse, maybe the greatest trotter we've seen. Uh, tell us about your experience with Muscle Hill. I got to uh, qualify Muscle Hill twice as a two-year-old, and uh, I drove him once in the Simpson. I think it went for 10000 and then uh, Luke got to drive him going for close to 500 I think, going in the, uh, the World Trotting Derby. Yeah. So uh, I had the, the pleasure of sitting behind him three times, and it was something else. Did you know right then and there uh, this was something special? Yeah, he was like driving a good pace of that horse. He, um, you know, to sit behind a two-year-old trotter that just uh, accelerates when you need him to and never really put a foot wrong, he, um, he, he was something else. Yeah, and of course he's become a dominant stallion. You're in every race tonight. Let's take a look at some of the drives you have tonight. Uh, Andrew, we'll st start with Snow Cone in the first uh, for Darren Cassar. You're driving for 10 different trainers tonight, a couple of them twice. One of them is Darren Cassar. Uh, the other's Dan Gill. Let's see, Snow Cone was giant three starts back, was beaten favorite last time. What do you think? She just wasn't a self last week. She's a much better horse than that. And uh, Darren uh, told me today she should be a lot better. Okay, let's turn over to race number two for Daylon, Daylon Horizon here. Uh, this is a horse last week who also came up a little bit short. Uh, Tom Shea's a pretty high percentage guy. What about him? You know what, I, uh, I just used this horse too hard last week. Yeah, Tom Shea does very well. Hopefully if I... Um, get a little better trip this week he should be a bit better okay the you're driving for jimmy tactor in race three with jimmy william from the rail uh two to one morning on your only favorite of the night what do you think of that one well he's exceptionally well bred um you know hopefully he shows up after his qualifier he he, he looks like he's the best although so philosophical and uh majestic sunset they're both good horses uh you know just a little mishap with majestic sunset last week but he was on a tear before that well, let's flip over to race five if we can for rooster rabbit uh, you drove him last time. He was second, seven to two. He's got the rail again. Uh, was he opportunistic last week? Was he good? What, what about that? No, I just couldn't get him to go down the backside last week. I, I think I've got his uh, measure now. He um, he felt great, like getting through the first quarter, and then he really let me go down the backside. Hopefully, I can keep him a little closer and uh, be in touch at the head of the stretch. Okay, and let's turn to race six for number four, Sterling Ensign. We have a big favorite in here in Hylator. Sterling Ensign's coming off a win. You drove at 9-2. to two. Um, can, he, uh, can he go with the favorite, do you think? He won well last week. He's a nice little horse. You know, he's going to need a trip in here, and uh, if things work out, we should, be, uh, we should be hanging around. Okay, let's take a look at, let's flip over to race number 8. Race 8, we're going to look at number 2, Mr. Hassani. He's 12-1 to one on the morning line, the second time you're driving for Darren Castor. Now, this horse, the last six starts, we see nothing better than fifth, but if you look a little further back from there, you see a couple of good efforts. Can we? What can we expect from him tonight? I got this horse in a bad spot last week. He um, he's a much better horse than what he's showing, and uh, I think he'll show it tonight. I'm, I'm just going to try and make sure he's he's got racetrack anyway at the head of the stretch. Okay, and we'll flip over if we can to race number ten. Let's go to race ten here for Fearless Leader. Fearless Leader is five to one. Uh, you said Noel Daly was instrumental in you coming here. Tell us about that. Well, absolutely. You know. Um, 
I got over I, all of my success to Noel and um, Aaron Lambert, two Australian guys that gave me a shot when they really didn't need to. Um, and uh, that's really the reason why I'm still here. And, and the, the disparity between the quality trainers, we have seven on the car tonight from down under, and only one driver, uh, Ross Wolfenden doesn't drive here. Uh, tell us you know, what might be the reason for that. Why don't we see more of the top guys from there racing here too? You know, it's just, it's so hard to get going. Even um, for younger kids, it's really hard to get going in this game and to, to have someone put you up. It, it, you know, I just got lucky. I was here at the right place, right time, and uh, it kind of snowballed. But it still took two or three years to really get going. And um, I guess a lot of kids that come over, they don't want to stick it out for two or three years. Can you, can you learn on the job down in New Zealand or Australia kind of thing? Like, can you, can you be a 19-year-old guy who's got another gig, who's working in the mornings, who's got three or four drives a night? Yeah, you can. You still need, you, you need that person that's going to um, give you the opportunity to, to drive. You know, if you haven't got them, you, will, you just really got no shot. And it's tough when you're driving long shots, too, and you got limited opportunities against guys who are driving in every race, too. So Absolutely. You're up against it. Let's take a look at the last late double here. Andy McCarthy's got long shots in here with uh, Parkett, Parkett in the 11th, number six. Daniel Gill's got you up on two tonight. What about horses like this that you don't know that well? What about this? You know what? I'll just listen to the trainer and um, see, see what they've got to say about the horse. Um, you know, 20 to 1 morning line, it, it, it's never a great sign. But, you know, a lot of the times the trainer will tell you information that you might be able to sneak out some money. You know, you, you probably can't win, but, but we're just looking to make money. Okay, and in the last race, you have number three, uh, work and play hard for Andy DiPietro. Uh This is a $7,500 claimer. It looks like he's going to have to step up his game to get into it. Yeah, he's got to step up a little bit. He's such a big horse. He, um, he's a little hard on himself, but hopefully I can keep him close and, like I said, just make a little money. Now, what about Blue Moon Stride, that really talented filly we saw last year? How's she coming back? You know what? I was talking to Mark last night about her, and um, he said she's bigger than ever and, and feels strong. She should be getting ready to qualify here in maybe two or three weeks, but, um, you know, this might be her year. She's she's so strong, this mare. She just, for some reason, she you know got a little weak there during the summer months, but um, she finished off really well, and she started off really and well. And that's a serious group of three-year-old Pace and Phillies she was in with last year. There was a lot of good ones in there. Oh, uh, I think the Pace and Phillies last year were better than the Pace and Colts. Yeah, I, I, can, I can see that for sure. Pure country and all those good ones in there. You have no post position worse than post six tonight. Andy McCarthy's in every race. So, Andy, good luck to you. Uh, say hello to your brother, Luke. Uh, tell him, listen, come on back and visit us like the Hambo Day or something or other. We I've haven't seen him in a while. And um, tell Noel and all, you, all the buddies we said hello. And uh, we'll be looking for you in the winter circle tonight. All right. Thanks, Hollywood. Thanks, Andy.